All right, we are going live for Second Sunday, which is our our little broadcast that we do here at Transcendence every month. And it is um, just an energy update, kind of what's going on in the planet, what's going on with the collective, what's going on with us individually as people. We have a live audience today, which I'm always so grateful for. Um, you know, as, as far as how I channel is really what I do is I have a message that usually I have no idea of what I'm going to say until I start saying it. It's all about trust. It's all about showing up. Uh, but when we have a live audience, it allows me to kind of tap into, you know, kind of a collective mind, mind stream of, of better ways to ask questions and be answered. So I appreciate you guys for being here. So if you're just seeing me for the first time, my name is Jessica Alstrom, and I am the creator of Transcendence International Consciousness Academy, which is an online university of higher self. So, you know, what we're all striving to do is not necessarily obtain success in the same way, but find who it is and what it is that we are and how to become the happiest, most loving version of that. So how do we become that? Well, the only way to really know ourselves is to get back to ourselves. And this year, this year has been all about pushing you into yourself. You know, 2018 is the divine uh, is the year of the divine feminine. It is the year of infinite abundance. It is also the year where we kind of let go old logical belief systems, old paradigm thinking, old obligations, old mindsets, and basically the old version of ourselves who we've been kind of programmed to be. And what that's done really is, is it's opened us up to more of that I am presence. And this I am presence is all about remembering who you are. Remembering who you were before someone else had an opinion of who you were. Who you were before someone gave you a name and a, religious, a religion and a school and an identity. So who were we th before these things? And so that's really what we dive into in our university. Uh, we like to go quantum, which is all-inclusive. We eliminate all um, belief systems and really get to the core of who we are as, as infinite possibilities. And what is infinite possibilities? It's basically all choice. That might be new to some of you guys, but as far as the spiritual journey goes, a lot of times when we're on a spiritual journey, we're seeking something from a perspective where we're still having limited choices. And so the idea of teaching more quantum mechanics on the spiritual journey allows us to, first and foremost, not have to attach to any modality, any belief system, any identity um, that even involves the spiritual journey, you know, and allows us to be more open in our thinking about the aspects of who we would be and what we are without any limits at all. So every month I have done this forecast for the past two and a half years and it's been um, an amazing experience for me to kind of get up here and expose my own vulnerability of what goes on in here and here and tap into the collective. I like to tap into both collective, um, the unawakened community and the awakened community because then I can really kind of see where, where we are as far as the masses and who we are as a leadership community. And the leadership community on the planet is basically those that are working on themselves. Believe it or not, it's not those who lead others. It's those who are working on themselves. So I commend you. Uh, this journey has not been easy for any of us. But I will tell you that the exciting thing about this year is that if you can just show up to yourself, if you can just be present, if you can look at yourself from a loving, non-judgmental perspective, and you can move through the obstacles of your own mind this year, we really are having the ability to create heaven on earth because really everything has just been you know, the enemies of the mind, the enemies of the programs, the enemies of your belief systems. And as we kind of let those things go, we open up to this grander knowing that really all we are is love. And returning to love is not about being in love. It's about literally just living and breathing and talking as if. Everything that you do is based in love, not obligation or logic or opportunity or circumstance. It has nothing to do with what is. It just happens to do with everything that you are. And April is a very exciting month because March, as you guys remember me doing the, um, the little second Sunday last March, it was, it was all about that feeling of being kind of in that dryer where you're going back and forth, getting slammed around a little bit. And, and what that means metaphorically is a lot of your past was returning to kind of slap you in the face. Some old fears, some old, um, old grief 
old uh, purging, you know, as, as far as the past. And what I want to do today is explain that both spiritually and scientifically, what's actually happening to your bodies. So, you know, as we move through all of these gateways and, you know, our wonderful universe is providing every opportunity for us to be pushed and squeezed and pressurized right now. Every solar flare, every full moon, every new moon, every Mercury retrograde is an opportunity for us to level up. And leveling up means more awareness, more opportunity to be present, more opportunity to be responsible. And responsible is just the ability to respond. It isn't about growing up. It's actually learning how to break rules effectively and live as your inner child. That's really the rules of the game. And on this planet, we like to follow the rules of time, relationships, health, and money. But the new paradigm that's opening up where we can live as the child, which means we're free to be in love, we're free to receive love, we're free to give love, we're free to be all the things that love is, the new game is going to look a little bit more like this. Timelessness instead of time. What would your life look like if you lived in a space of timelessness? When you looked in the mirror at yourself and instead of seeing your life pass you by, you saw your life just beginning. Moving away from relationships into partnerships. Relationships are usually about two wounded people coming together hoping that we're going to rescue each other. And what happens is we create resistance and separation. But in the new paradigm, we create partnerships, which is the opposite of separation is expansion. Which means when you get into a 5D partnership, your life explodes with opportunity. You have never felt better about yourself. You're free to give that unlimited amount of love that you're dying to give away to someone who can actually receive it or some people who can receive it. Okay, so that's the difference there. And as far as health goes, we're gonna move from just surviving our own health, managing our own health, keeping our bodies well, to moving into more of a supernatural state of being. And a, super, a supernatural state of being is a body that is able to not only heal itself quickly, but know, it's a, know itself as unlimited possibilities and potential, which means accessing parts of our DNA that have been closed down for thousands and thousands of years to give us not just the so-called super, superhero strength, but to give us a deeper knowing of the universe, deeper knowing of ourselves, our capabilities, accessing parts of our own genetics that can empower and, and provide uh, you know, uh, leadership and opportunities for us to become more of the genius that we already are and utilize 100% of that brain of yours instead of 10. You know, you use 10% of your brain to consciously focus and you use the rest to basically anchor yourself and hide from yourself. So as we begin to open up our brains and use them from a place of no secrets and no, no denial of self and no disassociation, we begin to access the parts of our brain that we've shut down to keep us safe. We're moving out of the paradigm of survival. We're moving into the paradigm of thrive. What would your life look like if you didn't have to survive your day, survive your week, survive your bank account, survive your body, survive your relationship, but able to create and build and create freedom and space and connection where you weren't obligated in attachment but moved into a space of true connection where looking in someone's eyes you know more of yourself instead of less. Looking in someone's face and instead of feeling comparison and judgment you saw the absolute heart space within your own being. That is what we have to look forward to. And, you know, as far as money goes, because money is one of the games that we play on this planet as far as the give and receive and the, the power struggle and the quintessential, uh, you know, how valuable am I? But as we move away from money and we move into basically prosperity, prosperity is what fifth dimensional um, earth will look like. Prosperity has nothing to do with the money game. It's about being able to give and receive with the value of within our I am presence versus, you know, what I went to school for or what I have an abundance of outside of me. It is all about giving and receiving the abundance within and allowing that to be not only your birthright, but be your paycheck, be your way that you are able to create and sustain your reality and flow in it and become very, very free in it. And that is what we have to look forward to. So how do we get from one game of surviving suffering to the next game, which is empowered prosperity? Well, the actual bridge, the way that we get from here to there is we go deep within ourselves. Because the bridge from um, I am not to I am 
is in between your belief systems about the secrets you keep from yourself and the rules that you have tapped into as far as this old matrix paradigm. You know, what are you still agreeing to? What are you still buying into? You know, we cannot have this whole utopia when we're still um, being supported by, you know, a paradigm that's not supporting us. So when we actually go within, you know, whether we use meditation, where we use breath work, we use, you know, deep, deep, expansive journey work, which most of us are already doing constantly, we start to realize is that all of these limitations that we've created outside of us came from a deep, deep need to create desire within us because desire is actually the engine of manifestation. Without a desire to not struggle, you would not be working on your journey. You know, for a desire, uh, you, the desire for you to be abundance creates you looking deeper within yourself. So we're utilizing desire in the third dimension to rise above our own belief systems and realize that a lot of our fears are not even our own. You know, we came here to be a reflection of light, which means we, became, we came here to lighten up this planet. We came here to show how simple the universe works and the simplicity of how the universe works is basically about just quantum focus what you see is what you get what you look at is who you are and what you want is coming from a deep place in you where you don't believe you can have it and those are the examination points that we look at in our university because there isn't anything outside of you that doesn't exist within you if you would just let yourself in and what we do in our academy is we go deep within ourselves and we ask ourselves the big questions like, how is it serving me to not have money? How is it serving me to not have this dream relationship that I'm seeking? How is it serving me to not have the health that I need? A lot of times you'll find is I don't have the health I need because the desire that's being created birthed inside of me has to be stronger than my own fear. When was the last time you actually leaped fear because your desire for change was so strong? That's the essence of the spiritual journey. That's why we choose limitation upon arrival. That's why we choose the experience of not being loved authentically. That's why we choose abuse. That's why we choose suffering. Because what we need is we need to activate that humanity within us, that root part of us that says, I desire more. I desire love. I desire to do all these things. And that's what embarks the spiritual journey. And without the spiritual journey, we would never need what we already are. Because the thing is, is we are light. We are love, we are knowing, we are the I am presence. And so that whole little forgetful thing that we go through upon birth allows us to play this game. And as from an example's perspective, your only job as a light worker and a guide on the planet is to be an example. And that does not mean perfection. That means being able to look within and say, this is a part of me that really needs to be healed and loved. This is a part of me that needs to be shared. This, this broken heart needs to be, um, you know, trans, transcended into light. This, this, this aspect of my lack needs to be embraced instead of hiding things and standing on a soapbox and preaching philosophy. That's the old paradigm. The new paradigm is the leaders of this planet are going to be the ones who have fallen and talked and preached about how they've raised above that, not about never falling. Because if we are literally ch children of the universe, we are here to have an emotional experience and journey just as much as we are here to have a spiritual experience. And emotions are like storms. They're like, it's like weather. And the planet makes no apologies for having a hurricane, does she? So why are you having an apology when you, you lose it or when you get angry or when you get sad? And the thing is, is we've been taught to not feel that, not do that, don't say that, don't be that, don't think that. And now we're waking up to the play, place where we say, well, if we don't say that and think that and be that and live that, then who, we, who are we going to be? So really, it's an act of rebellion. Love is an act of rebellion. It's our deep knowing, it's our anarchist within that says, I'm here to break the rules and I'm here to love you anyways. I'm here to find the darkest places of your heart and love you so unconditionally that you begin to love yourself. That's your job. That's our job. And the more that we do that with ourselves first, which means the parts of you that you don't want the world known is the very stories you should be sharing right now. Your darkest hour should be your highlight. It should be your YouTube video. It should be your blog. Because as you share that, you're, what you're doing is, is you're opening up light to your own heart. 
You're making space inside of there for something else besides pain and suffering to exist. And so as we heal ourselves, we then judge others less for their own healing journey. As we look within and we solve these dark corners of ourselves, we see those dark corners within other people and instead of judgment, we have compassion. We have a knowing that they, all they need to do is be seen and heard in the way that is a loving example versus um, you know, separation and judgment. So April is a very cool month. You know, March was a little, um, what's the word, crazy. And the reason why is because we started our, you know, Mercury retrograde, which basically stirs the pot energetically. You know, the planet literally is electromagnetically different during Mercury retrograde. And then we had two full moons in March. One was a gate opening and one was a very serious gate closing. One was opening and saying, who do you choose to be? And that last 31st of March was about who are you in this moment? Who are you moving into this threshold? Who am I becoming? All right? And in that now moment, you were kind of being stretched between higher self and ego. And ego was saying, all I know is who we've been. And I am says, let me show you where we're going. And so any fear that you've had in the last 30 days is just coming from that. Comfort in where you've been, excitement in where you're going. It can feel like panic. It can feel like anxiety. It can feel like terror. It can feel like depression. It can feel like excitement, depending on what frequency you're on. So if you've been doing your work and you've been showing up, which is your only job, show up to yourself. That's it. The entire spiritual journey has nothing to do with, with paradigms of old teachings and breathing. It's all about who do I choose to be in this moment? And who do I need to become in order to feel as good as I do on the inside of my heart? What actions do I need to take? As we move into this era of being led by the divine feminine, we are also accessing and healing this great part of our divine masculine that has been about suppression and control and separation. And we are from a loving divine feminine aspect, diving down deep into our own divine masculine, which is our root, our sacral, and our solar plexus energy. And we are showing the divine masculine and rem reminding that divine masculine what love is and how to be loved and how actually we can use the power of love instead of the power of power. We're moving away from that paradigm of power versus power and moving into the power of love, right? It's really our only ammunition that we have moving forward. Self-love is obviously the, the greatest gift that you could ever give yourself. And in this month of April, we're going to be moving into this new moon. I think it's the 14th through the 16th, depending on where you are in the planet. And it's going to be an Aries, which is a ball of fire. So you're going to have extra energy to get through what you need to get through. You're going to be stubborn in your own truth, which is what we love about Aries, which means you're going to be holding on to your I am a little bit stronger this month, which means you have such a greater knowing of yourself that you're not so easily going to give yourself away because you did that. You've played there. You know it's not serving you. You know you're ready to be who you came to be, and you're not going to know who that is until you start practicing it. Just like you don't actually know how to drive a car until you've been behind the wheel for a little bit. It's like you can get the theory of it, but until you've actually walked in the steps, your own biochemistry doesn't get the message. So if your biochemistry doesn't get the message about who you are, it'll all stay in your head and you'll want and you'll desire to be who you are. But if you begin to behave as if, if you begin to move your body in the expectations of who and what your heart is, your body will begin to change and morph and adapt to the influence of your mind. Otherwise, it stays all a mind game. And, and I have thousands of people all over the world tell me, I've been on this journey for 20 years. I know everything you're saying, but nothing changes in my physical reality. Well, there's a very specific thing that you have to do in your physical reality to change your physical reality, and that is you change your physical reality. You have to behave differently. You have to behave as someone who is the person they see themselves as instead of the person that you've been built to be. Behavior is how we integrate divine feminine and divine masculine. It is all about behaving as if. Even if the circumstances and events and the people haven't shown up yet, even if your life is a total bore, if you would just act as if, the universe would support you with that move mountains, change scripts, turn you in upside down into the parallel reality that you actually choose to be and then have that whole experience show up for you because everything is first energy. 
Everything has to exist first as energy, and then it manifests as a physical reality. So if your physical reality isn't as you want now, you've got to go back to the energy drawing board. You've got to go back to where you built that blueprint, and we've got to change that blueprint. So this Aries energy that we're moving into is going to give us the strength, the stamina, and the stubbornness to stay in our am this month. And that's really what we need because we've been kind of pushed and pulled this whole year so far. We've been purging excessively and purging emotion. We've been pur purging physical toxins. We've been purging earth toxins. We've been purging um, old collective belief systems that are no longer serving us. And we are lightening up as a collective. You can notice if you look around the planet, Earth is literally, we are technically mimicking Earth, but she's also mimicking us in a grand reflection of her crazy weather. It's like one minute it's 90 degrees and the sun is shining, and the next minute it's an ice storm. So it's really reflective of our emotional purging that's going on right now. And the emotional purging that is going on right now is the most important thing that you could do. You know, the old paradigm was find relief. The new, the, the new paradigm is feel your feelings right? Before it was like, let's just find relief and move to a higher frequency and a higher vibration. And now it's like, let's get into those lower frequency and vibrations and let's bring some love down there. Let's bring some love down to the part of technology. I was getting a call. Um, I'll call you later, Taylor. That's my daughter. <laughs> so, so as far as where we're heading, April is just another gift from the universe, which is who we are. Believe it or not, you are the universe incarnation. Universe, you inverse, it's your story. It's your physical reality, it's your emotional reality, it's your chemical reality, and it's your non-physical reality. And you are making it up through the beliefs and your focal points. So why we, we teach deep quantum theory is because whatever you focus on, you become. So if I'm focusing on who I've been, I will become more of who I've been. If I focus on what it would be like to be a new, improved, unlimited, super awesome, badass superhero within, then that is more of what I'm going to get a reflection of. And it really is that simple because the universe is the most uncomplicated game in the entire universe itself. It is literally about who do you believe yourself to be and what are you thinking? Who do you believe yourself to be and how are you showing up? Who do you believe yourself to be and how much do you trust that? That's all that's left for you. That's all that you actually have to do for the rest of your existence is ask those questions. And then show up to your answer that you get. Not the answer that you, your mind wants to get, but the answer that you really get. And using this kind of fireball energy that we have coming up, we may face a little bit of our old selves in the mirror, but all you really have to do is say, is that really who I am? Who am I? Who do I choose to be? Because that is literally the bridge. You know, you guys know how law of attraction works by now. You know how law of reflection works. You know that there's nothing outside of you that is not a reflection of your higher self or your ego. Nothing that is outside of your potential to create, which means whether you want to create, you know, um, $10 or a million dollars, the universe doesn't have an opinion about what greater or lesser than. The only person that has an opinion about it is you. So when you can change your mind about your level and ability to create is when you get to live in prosperity versus lack. It's really that simple. And this energy that will carry us all the way pretty much into July will give us the strength to practice the I am. You're in the practice phases. You know, you got your driver's license and you're behind the wheel and you're scared to death, but you want that freedom more than your fear. Am I right? Right now, on planet Earth, you want freedom more than you want that old fear. And that's why you're going to level up and that's why you're going to keep showing up and that's why you're going to make it through. You know, if you find that you are choosing fear over that freedom, then you know, you get to experience that for a little bit longer because the universe loves you so much that it honors your free will and your free choice. And it says, whatever you choose to experience, we're right here with you. And we will actually amplify what it is you choose to experience. So if you choose to continue to experience lack, we've got a whole big bag of it for you. If you choose to experience joy, we've got a big bag of that for you. So it really is your choice. But moving from an old paradigm of very limited to choice to all choice can be very overwhelming, especially for the ego part of you that's never gotten what she wanted, never gotten what he needed. So it might feel like the rug might be pulled out from underneath you, which is why we practice. We practice giving and receiving love without any expectations of losing it. We, we love the people that we love and, and disregard the idea that they could possibly not love us back. Did you know that that's our practice, is to love them anyways? 
I mean, you don't know what other drivers are going to do on the road, but you still get behind the wheel. And you still move towards your destination no matter how other people behave, right? If you got on the road and said, well, these people may not like me and they may not love me and they may not get out of my way, you would never leave the garage. But you do. You do because your freedom and your desires and your life is more important than the fact that it may not go exactly your way. But if you looked at your life exactly like, you know, a, a road trip to your favorite destination, it would be absolutely no different. You need the courage, you need the stamina, you need the gas, and you need clear directions. And with clear directions, you'll be able to access your GPS system, which is your intuition and your deep knowing that knows exactly the fastest way to get there, even if it feels off to your logical mind. Logic says we got to go this way to get to our hopes and dreams, and spirit says, no, it's this way. He says, well, that looks like a storm. He says, trust me, because you're going to learn something about you, yourself that you really need in this storm. You're going to access a little bit more courage. You're going to become humble. You're going to become strong. And as you move through it, on the other side of it, it's actually a shortcut. And as we move through this shortcut, on the other side of that is you being able to appreciate and be grateful for what you just lived through. And that's why we come. We come to experience this particular game. Sounds pretty easy when you look at it this way. The mind overcomplicates everything. <laughs> the ego needs everything to be, um, you know, a problem, which is why when we're teaching quantum theory, we teach that we are both the problem and solution. Right here in my energy field, I contain both the problem and the solution. If I created the problem simultaneously, I also created the solution. Because I'm quantum, split, focus, I cannot create the yang without the yang. I cannot create the right without the wrong. I cannot create the good without the bad. And I cannot create the answer without the solution. And it is all within me. So when we find ourselves in problems, our first, you know, route that we've been programmed to do is to go look outside of ourselves. And in the moment that we look outside of ourselves, we judge ourselves for not being able to have the answer for ourselves. And that takes us down a lonely road of isolation and self-judgment. But if I were to say, well, I've got a problem, where did I put that solution? Oh, okay, it's right here. Then I would never go into self-doubt. I would never lose my trust for myself. And I would never fall out of, my out of love for myself because I would know that I lost my solution in the problem. And that was the only place I was ever gonna need to look to find it. So the exciting times that we're in right now is all about you lightening up. It's all about you finding that child within yourselves and learning how to play again. Most of you guys have not been allowed to play as children the way you wanted to. You had to grow up too fast. You had to be too responsible. You carried an empathetic, you know, weight on your shoulders of your entire family and bloodline. And now it's your turn to play. And by you remembering how to play, you teach those around you how to play. As you lighten up, you allow and become an influence for other people to lighten up. When you love unconditionally without needing to be loved in return, you teach the world that love is safe. It is not, a, it's not fearful, but you have to be the example of that. And first and foremost, you do all of those things within yourself, which means it's safe to love yourself, even if you're not at your perfect weight or your perfect income bracket or your perfect age. Loving yourself unconditionally without conditions is the first step to be able to even be present with your I am. Because if you notice when you are in lack thinking about anything, I don't have enough money, I don't have enough time, I don't have what I wanna see in the mirror yet, you're never in the present moment. You're searching in the past where you made the mistakes and you're wondering in the future how you're gonna fix it. But you miss where all the magic is in the present moment of looking deep within yourself and accessing the truth of who you are, which is divine perfection. Which means no matter how you look in this moment, this is actually how you're choosing to look, either because you're celebrating your, yourself or you're using where you are as a place to create so much desire that you will move and change. Because believe it or not, you don't change and you don't shift and you don't become when you're comfortably numb. When you're comfortably uncomfortable, you don't change. You complain, you blame, you judge. But when you get to the place where you are so tired of being numb and idle and stuck and blocked and the power of that rises greater than the fear of failure, of letting someone down, then you are able to step outside of that jail cell that you have created for yourself. And that key to that jail cell 
is literally in self-trust, self-appreciation, and gratitude, gratitude, gratitude towards self, believe it or not. Believe it or not, the key to your freedom lies in looking at how far you've come in this moment. If all you did in April is spent time loving on yourself, going, look how far we've come. Look at what we've managed to accomplish. Look at our level of awareness. Look at what we have lived through, survived. And look at who we are in this moment. If all you did this month was stay in a state of self-gratitude, it would definitely, you know, shift you into a lot less work, which I highly recommend. And if we look at frequency and vibration, gratitude is going to be the thing that is your greatest asset fear. Because when you are in fear, it's all you can see is fear, right? Fearful things create fearful outcomes. Fearful ideas create fearful thinking. But there is one secret magic little thing that we can use when we're in this space, and that's gratitude. Gratitude is the place to get you into a higher frequency the fastest possible way. And if you just go gratitude towards self, not gratitude towards your house or your money or your cars, but for you, for you showing up, for you sticking with it even when you wanted to give up and just saying, you know, I'm really proud of myself. That will shift your body into a frequency of unparalleled ability to create. Now what we're going through biologically this month, because obviously this is all, we're talking energy, we're talking potential, but what's actually happening to the physical body? You know, Mother Earth is purging density, which means that the planet Earth itself has the ability to deascend and reascend, which means go all the way down into density, matter, and transcend all the way back into light. And so she is on her, she is on her program of expansion, which is herself moving back into an enlightened seventh dimensional planet. Your bodies are following the suit. We are literally the children of Earth. So therefore, our bodies are becoming more light and less dense. And so you're noticing you're purging a lot of emotions right now. But there's some other things that you're purging within your body. And you're right now, what I, when I tapped in last week to the collective, we're purging the lymphatic system right now. That's the biological unit that we are processing right now, which houses a lot of our immunities and a lot of our um, old emotional garbage, right? This is also in our fascia, in our meridian systems. So what I'm doing is recommending those who are having a hard time getting out of fear right now or having a hard time leaping from depression to joy is to get some body work done. And I don't necessarily mean, you know, high level energy work. I mean hands on, cranial sacral, um, lymphatic massage, you know, the power of touch is insane. And a lot of us empaths, we have had such resistance on being touched and receiving touch that this would be the exact same, the exact same thing that you would need for your body right now is to overcome that and be physically touched, right? To have some hands-on work done with your body. Reflexology, anything you guys can do to help you basically unwind. Because the more trauma your body has been through and the more emotional resistance that you are in, the tighter your body is. It's like wound up. It's almost like when you get a ball of chain and you can't unstretch it, your body becomes the same way. So if you're noticing that you're having a hard time moving out of fear right now, then this would be a place that I would literally dive into and work on. This is also a reflection of you being extremely self-nurturing and loving to yourself that you're looking for the answers within yourself instead of outside of yourself. You're not chasing fear. You're going, fear is just something that's stuck in my body and I need to let that go now. Because we are in the phase of release, relief and release. So we will be releasing energetic toxins, physical toxins, emotional toxins, and chemical toxins heavily for the rest of this year because we are being asked within ourselves, our own consciousness to lighten up. So anything that does not reflect or resonate to the frequency of joy and above is going to be purged from your physical body. Which means that if you were in the present moment, you would recognize right now that spirit and the universe was giving you opportunities to fall madly in love. What is in this present moment that you have an opportunity to fall madly in love with? Because again, as we're purging, we also have that carrot that we can always follow. You know, what is the remembrance of love to you? What do you identify with love? Spending time playing again. How does, how does my inner child like to play? You might have to spend some time practicing that. 
So as you do, what you do is you start to let go of the edge, the inner critic. The ego naturally integrates into higher self without having to go through a death process because we're not here to kill our egos. We're here to teach them how to be love. You know, they're that, that, that kind of poor, poor loser, that cynic, that critic that never got picked first, that never got loved, that was bullied and abused. And it, all it's doing is remembering that. So anytime you start to move ahead, it's that, it's that voice in your head saying, mm, I don't think we can do this. I don't think we, we know how to do this. I don't think we're good enough. I don't think we deserve this. And all your job is to do is look at it and say, that's who we used to be. That was all just belief systems and not let me show you how to love. Because there's nothing, there's nothing greater in the whole planet than seeing a child be in love or in play. That's divine ecstasy. So when we can find those two frequencies, the rest of our life gets pretty simple. Not that we won't have challenges, but challenge defined is a duel. I challenge you problem to find my own solution in my own biochemistry. So how do I do that? Well, I take really good care of my body. Those of you who are in the spiritual community that are still not honoring your bodies, and I don't mean that in any sort of modality perspective, I don't care whether you're vegan or you're eating meat, I'm talking about what you're putting in your body that allows you to be more of who you are, which means, does your body feel confident? Does it feel light? Does it feel free? Does it work properly for you? Does it feel hydrated? Does it feel nurtured? Does it feel loved? That's what I want you guys to look at as far as your diet goes. And supplementation, if we're going through a basically energetic lymphatic purge right now, and the metaphor of that is we're releasing basically identities and chemicals of that which we were, that we are no longer. Abuse, victimization, blame, judgment, resentment, humiliation, shame, guilt. That's what's coming out of our lymphatic system right now. So what do we do when we're sick? We take better care of ourselves. So I'm not saying that we're sick, but we're going through an emotional release. And you will have detox symptoms which means you will find yourself being extremely exhausted on and off for the rest of this year. But we also know that just like a newborn baby needs 15 hours of sleep, that's where you do all of your growing and all of your thriving. So allowing yourself to sleep. Writing down those lucid dreams that you're having. Because what you're having is now you're having the opportunity to move into a dream state where you're actually a little bit more present there. You're identifying with your dream state a little bit different now in this new paradigm. You're seeing things out of the corner of your eyes and you're not that, that, you're not that afraid of them. You're opening other parts of your intuition and you're allowing yourself to be more of who you came to be. So that's what we have for April. Sounds exciting. Simple enough, right? So everything that you're doing is hard. Stop doing it. Everything that you're doing right now that you don't love doing, stop doing it. Every place that you have, feel like you have to be, that you don't want to be, stop being there. And allow yourself to be on that metaphorical um, trapeze where, you know, at some point you have to let go and know that the universe is going to catch you. And that's something we call faith. And that has nothing to do with religion. It is about trusting yourself so deeply that you already had the answer before you created the problem. Knowing that the solution is not on the side where the problem is, but having to let go and jump into the frequency of the solution and have trust and know that when you get on that road, you guys know your GPS is going to work. Even if it goes out for a few minutes, you know it's going to come back online. And that's really where we are as a collective. Um, and obviously that's our, light, our light worker collective, but our, our, our unawakened pop population is vastly awakening. Can you guys agree with that? Mm -hmm can't go anywhere and not be able to have these conversations. Maybe not in this exact language, but you're able to have these conversations. And so your job is not to go out and kill yourself to wake up the world. Your job is to go play. Your job is to be free. Your job is to be love. And your job is to love unconditionally, regardless of what you're getting back. And that is really all you have to do to be the example of what light is and what love is. And the universe will grandly support you because your divine birthright is abundance. And this year is trying to allow you to see that the only thing that's ever been in the way of your abundance, your freedom, your choice, has been your lack of choice or your belief in lack of choice. You know, I say third, third dimension is like going into a restaurant and having a menu, menu of two pages and having to create your entire life from a menu of two pages. But when we shift and we move into higher levels of dimensions, basically we have just Google to choose our life from, anything you could possibly imagine. But it, it allows you to have to level up to think, well, who, what do I want? I'm so used to being able to choose from this. 
I don't know who I am over here. And that is going to create some uncomfortable energy within your ego, but it shouldn't be fear. If you're fearing it, get some body work done. Change your diet. Because you know what? Really, the last shift of us being able to kind of level up has nothing to do with our spiritual knowledge. It is about how well we're taking care of these bodies, why it goes through the greatest shift in humanity. Your body is going through a huge growth purse, right, growth path right now, and it is detoxing all of the feelings and the thoughts and beliefs that are trapped at a cellular level that you are not. So taking extra good care of your body this month, you know, things that I would eliminate per personally to help you kind of shift and elevate would be white sugar. Anything that is bleached or processed, anything that has toxins on it, because again, food is information. And here we are trying to get a clear sense of information that's coming from our own intuition. And if we're dumping a bunch of information in our bodies that is out of alignment with where we're going, it's going to be a contradiction. And one more contradiction that we really just don't need to tolerate at this time and space. We don't really need to do that anymore. So look at it as more as an act of self-love than, you know, having to put yourself in a jail cell about what you eat, right? Allowing yourself more rest will, limit, will lower your cravings of sugar because you're allowing yourself to regenerate and reju rejuvenate the energy within yourself and get, instead of getting it from outside of you. All right. I'm a chatterbox. So do we have any questions um, online, Frank? Anybody here? Nothing? Not yet? Awesome. Good. Well, maybe I got it all out then. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, if we don't have any questions as far as what we're moving into, obviously, um, I want to let you guys know where you can find me because you will have questions and I somehow have answers. Uh, I have several different communities where you can find um, our work that we're doing here at Transcendence. And that is, um, it's on through Facebook, through our website. It's www.jessicaalstrom.com. And our Facebook groups, which is, gives me the opportunity to global coach. And what that does is it gives me a way to kind of tap into the collective and teach for the world versus having to see one-on-one -on -one clients. Um, and that's found through Facebook. Um, that is our subscription group, and that is Jessica Alstrom Quantum Life Tika, T-I-C-A. And that's our subscri subscription group. And that's where you can find my live teachings and coachings there, where I do anywhere between um, 8 and 16 hours of teaching per week in that group. And then, obviously, the community group where you're finding yourself in is a place for me to just jump online and do new moon reports or share data with you guys as far as what's coming and going. And then we have our Quantum Life Tribe, which gives you guys your impact place where you can share your own stories, your own videos, your own testimonials, your own teaching moments, your own businesses, and connect from a non-judgmental uh, perspective of like-minded individuals. That isn't a place where we vent and, and purge. That is a place where we basically connect and expand. So that's, that's there. And then if you guys are also hearing me for the first time and you haven't seen me on YouTube, we, have, uh, we, are, we just found out that we are in 102 countries now. Our live streaming is in 102 countries, which is pretty awesome. So quantum physics has gone mainstream, apparently. And, um, and we couldn't be more excited about it. So you can find us on YouTube. We've got over 250 videos on YouTube from everything from time travel to parallel realities to quantum physics to, you know, your own biochemistry to belief systems to anything you could ever imagine and lots more. So um, thank you guys for joining me today. I hope some of this answered some of the questions of what you're going through. And if not, jump online, join us in our community group. And um, we're just using all, we're using each other as, uh, as a way to see our greatest blind spots and confirm what we already know and amplify our intuition and certify our knowing. And that is the purpose of our, our coaching is not to, you know, act as guru, but to remind you within that you are, you are your guru and, and sometimes just having someone else reflect back to you that blind spot that you can't see makes all the difference in the world for you. So, and I just want to thank all of our teachers that have graduated through um, Transcendence this last couple of years. I've got one of them in the audience and um, two of them in the audience and, um, and the impact that you guys are making and, and not in just your work, but in your influence 
and in your abilities to look deep, deep within yourselves and honor yourselves at all time before any other commitments. That's really the name of the game is self-honoring before any other commitments and leveling up. And, you know, I'm not doing personal one-on-one -on -one sessions anymore. I've kind of gotten the ability to retire from that. And I do mentorships now where I take people on a three-month journey all the way deep, deep, deep within themselves to find freedom, joy, abundance, and love. Uh, but we've got a lot of graduates. We call it our A-team. And they are taking one-on-one -on -one sessions. And they have been trained under the transcendence philosophy, which is basically... Um, you know, the aspect of becoming higher self. So you can always tap into our website and access our coaches that way if you're looking for a one-on-one -on -one session. We've got teachers, healers, trainers, guides, seers, knowers. Pick your, pick your poison and um, jump right in and um, join us on this wild ride. So thank you guys for being here and I will see the rest of you guys in class.